Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Civil Construction and Tutor and in this video we will be modeling and analyzing the steel truss considering the real field practices. So this is the AutoCAD model of the truss that we are going to model and analyze and here you can see different uh, dimensions and the arrangement of the truss and the truss looks something like this in real field. So this is the truss that we are going to model and let me start with the naming of the different components. The inclined member is known as the raptor, bottom member is known as the bottom cord and then these are the strut or also known as the cords and uh, these are the panel joint, this is the peak joint, member that runs throughout the length of the structure is the purlin, you can see this. So this horizontal member that runs throughout this length uh, that connects different truss is the purlin. This is the general introduction to the uh, truss. Now let us start with the modeling and analysis of the truss. So for the analysis of the steel structure, I prefer SAP 2000. Let me start. Go to new model. And here you can see initialize model with the default tab. We will go with kilonewton meter and centigrade. And we will select the grid option only. So it will be total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So number of grid lines 13 and similarly in y direction the spacing is 3.2 meter and the number of grid lines is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. For now let us assume as equally spacing so 7 in z direction the number of grid lines is 3. So considering this as a lower projection 1, 2 and 3. Grid spacing is in x direction, it is 0 0.943. In y direction, it is 3.2, and in z direction, it is 1.46. But the lower projection is different, we can make or we can modify that later on. So first grid line location 00, zero. we will consider the initial origin. So this is how the 3D uh, grid looks but as we said the rise of the projection face is little bit different from the actual rise of the truss. So the projection is to be 0 0.292 meter down from the support. So let us go to this and right click here edit grid data go to modify source system here this is okay 1.46 but this is 0 0.292 and it is a negative value from the origin it should be down okay go to yz and let us keep this at sorry uh, xz and let us keep at y is equal to 0 so this is the grid formation now let us go to the modeling of the steel frame you can find different approach of modeling the steel frame. Uh, some people use the grid to create all the steel frames. Some use point object method. Uh, they have different approach. I use the divide frame approach. You can find it easy. You can find it tough. It depends upon you. If you like this, you can follow this. Otherwise, you can go with the uh, grid formation approach. So let me show you how to draw steel frame. Draw frame and here I will select the predefined frame section i haven't defined the frame which i am going to use i will define that later on but for now let me go with this till modeling only so this is the point where the support is to come you can see in the 3d as well so here you have the support and this is the projection part only so i will draw from this point like this and this is the mid that is the reach point and I will extend from here to here like this okay now uh, I will draw frame in all the grids and I'll then divide that selecting this quick draw option like this I will delete all the bottom cords here similarly I will delete this also I'll delete this and 
this as well and this member as well and I will divide them using the divide selected frame object go to edit edit lines divide frames select break at intersection with selected join straight frame area edges and solid edges apply so it is divided now you can delete this way and similarly you can delete this as well so we have just model the principal raptor bottom cord and the struts now let me draw the inclined struts as well So this is the overall view of the truss here you can see we are just similar to this one now what about the support the support is to be provided over this point so assign go to join restraint and we'll provide pin support not a fixed one due to the reason that if we provide fixed support uh, due to the fixity at the end the member will attract unwanted moments and shear forces which we are not going to design for we have just modeled for the first span now we have to do that for the other span as well that is along y direction so we'll just replicate this in this point this point so i'll just replicate this select all replicate command is at period so go to replicate and then we will be replicating this in the linear direction that is linearly in y direction so increment the distance between two a span is 3.2 meters so 3.2 is this positive y direction and the number is 1 2 3 4 5 6 so number increment data 6 apply so you can see we have just done with the modeling of the raptors cords but we have to model purlin as well so for which i uh, will use the uh, extrude command and for this we'll select all the joints from the first span and we'll extrude this point to frame so this is an extremely helpful command so basically we are just, we are just extending this point to a frame element so go to edit here you can see extrude extrude points to frame or cables so we are just extruding to this as a frame so dy again we are extruding in the y direction and this length is 3.2 meter and six numbers okay so here you can see we have just modeled the overall component of the truss purlin raptor cords now we are going to define the material type section type and load patterns and the load combination then we will come to the final results so for now let us go to define materials and uh, add new material and then go for india as for now steel that is the material type steel indian and great fe 250 generally uh, we are still using fe 250 in general cases so fe 250 okay and okay now go to define section properties frame section so it is somehow similar to the rcc material that we have already done previously now for go to add new property and then select pipe and give the size that you want but as we have a standard set of data a standard set of a standard set of sections defined by the indian standard so we'll use that property using this command that is import new property so here you can see frame section property type steel and the type of section you want to use that is i section pipe section tube section rectangular section any of which you are going to use for truss we are using pipe section you have to enter uh, you have to select the section for if you are using the chinese code then you can use for chinese for now i have to use indian so when you are importing the new property you have to firstly select this indian pro and this is the indian standard go to fe250 pipe type 
and select the sections to import. So we will be selecting the section which are easily available in the market, which are easy to work in the site and considering the economic point of view as well. So for now, let me select IS 32, 40, uh, 50, 65, 80, uh, 90, 80, 110. So these are the structure or these are the sections that are easily available. So IS 32 M, this is medium, lightweight, heavyweight. So this is according to the weight of the structure. So I will be selecting the medium type only. So IS NB 32 M, 40 M, 50 M, 65 M, 80 M, uh, 90 M, 100 M and then 110 M. So these are the structure. A section that I will be considering for the design okay so we have just selected the frame property that we will be considering for the design of the structure now either you can uh, provide this uh, frame properties individually to the uh, component of the truss that is for raptor for bottom cord for the struts and for the purling or you can go with the auto select list that is I will provide or I will make an list of all these property and assign to all the components and by the program analysis the program will itself give the most appropriate section to that member according to the demand capacity ratio so basically you have to understand that the steel structure is designed on the basis of demand capacity ratio that is capacity of the structure should be greater than that of the demand of the structure itself that is a simple concept so i will show you that later on now let us see how the auto select list is to be Need. So go to add new property and here you can see auto select list make sure that you are considering the frame section property type as steel auto select list now we have to add the section that you want to consider for the design that is auto selection here so select all of this add so these are the section that will be included during the demand capacity analysis and from this the appropriate one will be given to the member itself okay so we have auto one over here okay now select all the frame and then go to assign frame frame section and assign the auto one so here you can see the structures are assigned with the auto element and for now it is uh, taken as 65 and this is general uh, or this we can say as a starting value given to the frame itself by the software without any analysis this is not the final one we have to analyze and then only it will give the final result for now it is just a starting section property uh, assigned to the frame now let us define the load patterns and the dead load of the structure itself so let me add the live load type live and new load similarly is I am not going to model the CGI seat considering it is not a structural element of the structure so I will just directly apply the load of the CGI seat on the purlin CGI seat dead add new load pattern similarly wind load and we will uh, apply the wind load manually considering this as none Add new load pattern okay so we have defined the load pattern that is dead load live load uh, dead load of CGI seed and the wind load and why we haven't considered earthquake because considering the truss as a lightweight structure the effect of wind load is adverse than that of the earthquake and the effect of the earthquake and wind load does not occur at once we are considering a single load for the adverse condition okay Similarly, go to define load combination. You can either add manually from the IS code or you can go for the add default design combination, steel frame design. Okay, so this is the uh, load combination for the design of the steel structure. Here you can see these are the different scale factor. So you can find this in the IS code as well. Okay. So we have done with we are done with the uh, material type section property load pattern as well as the load combination now we will apply the load on this structure so in some video you will find that the load is being applied on the 
CGI sheet and the CGI sheet will distribute the load to the structure or to the purlin. But what I'll do is I'll directly apply the load on the purlin because CGI sheet is not a structural component. So it is better to apply the load directly on the member which is uh, responsible for uh, resisting the load from the CGI sheet that is purlin. So I'll directly apply the load to the purlin. So what the what is the load that is to be applied? The live load, CGI sheet dead load, and the wind load. So let us start with the CGI sheet dead load. So there is a standard value for the load to apply on the CGI sheet to purlin due to the CGI sheet. It is a, a known value. It will be given from the factory. So for now, let us start with the loading. So rise of the truss 1.46 meter, as I have said. So you can see this is 1.46, you can find over here 1.46 that is the rise. Similarly span of the truss 9.43 meter. So 9.43. Similarly height of structure, so the structure below the support is 4.5 meter. Let us assume it may be different. For now I am considering it as 4.5 meter. Span of the structure which will be equal to the span of truss that is 9.43 meter assuming opening as less than 5% so the effect of opening is adverse so there is a, a significant effect of the opening on the structure when we consider the uh, external pressure or we can say upward pressure downward pressure it will depend upon the uh, percentage of opening in this structure. So for now let us assume that there is less than 5% of opening. You can find this point in IS875 and according to this the coefficient of uh, pressure varies and I will explain that while considering the wind load. Now height by width ratio. So this is the ratio of height of building to the width of the uh, sex structure that is height of the structure to the width of the structure. So this comes at 0 0.48 meter which is simply uh, 4.5 divided by 9.43 and the slope of the structure. So this is simply tan inverse perpendicular to base. So we'll get this value and I have just done tan inverse 1.46 divided by 9.43 divided by 2 considering at the midpoint. So we will consider our right angle triangle. So this comes as 17.21 degree and the spacing of purlin along this span is 0 0.94 meter which we have provided. Now weight of the roof covering that is the CGI sheet, corrugated GI sheet that is galvanized iron sheet and the roofing load is 0 0.1 kN per meter square. So this is the standard value that we will consider for the CGI sheet and this is per meter square. That means if we are going to apply the load on area then we have to apply 0 0.1 kN per meter square. But we are applying this on the purlin that is a beam or a frame and for a frame the load is applied in terms of kilonewton per meter that is UDL uniformly distributed load or uniformly varying load but should be in terms of kilonewton per meter and as I said okay, let me draw here and you will understand so considering this as an area we are trying to distribute the area load into or we are distributing the load along the length so what we'll do is we'll multiply this area load by the width then we can get the length or the load along the length and the width here is the spacing of the purlin. So we'll distribute the area load into length by multiplying the area load with the spacing of the purlins. So the same thing has been done here. Roofing load per meter is equal to spacing of purlin into roofing load. 0 0.1 into 0 0.94 this comes as 0 0.094 kN meter. So this is the load that will be acting on the purlin as a weight of roof covering. So the loading of the CGI sheet will be same for all the purlins except this. Why it will be different? Let me show you. So if we consider this two CGI sheet then half of the load of this CGI sheet will act on this and half of this uh, CGI sheet will act on this purlin. But for this purlin, only the half or the way, half weight of the CGI sheet is to be considered. So we'll divide that load by 2 and apply on the 
आउटर मस्ट पर्लिन सिलेक्ट ऑल दी पर्लिन एक्सेप्ट दी आउटर मस्ट वन assign frame load and then go to distributed one select cg acid global gravity type force is load type is force and it is 0.1 sorry 0.094 apply and similarly for the outer must As it is carrying the half of the load of the CGI set, you can divide this by two and apply. So this is the CGI set load acting on the purlin. So you can also apply the area load uniformly to the purlin. So let me show you how you can do that. You can see here in the area load. Sort of uh, uniform to frame, so you can do like this. Draw a area and select this. Assign area load uniform to frame, and the load of which you want to apply into the purlin. That is the load pattern. For example. CGI sheet. The load was, in terms of kilonewton per meter square, it was 0.1, and in terms of UDL, it was 0.09. So for now, it is 0.1. Global gravity and load distribution one way or two way. So we are trying to distribute this load in the two purlins. So it will be one way only. Now apply. Okay. Now go to display. So object load assign area and then uniform load to frame resultants apply. So it has been applied in this direction, but it is not true. So what we have to do is we have to change the local axis. So assign frame area local axis. 90 degree apply now again apply the load has been applied into the purlin through the area so this is how you can apply the uh, uniformly area load distributed to the frames directly and in case of wind load it will be different so you have to change the local axis by an angle which i will show you later now we will apply the live load The concept of live load is also same. That is, it is it will be divided half in the outermost purlin as it is also a area load that will uh, come from the CJ seat. And for the live load, we have to follow IS eight seven five part two nineteen eighty seven table two. So what does it says? So this is the IS 875 Part 2, 1987 Table 2, and this is for the imposed load on the various type of roof, flat, sloping, or curved roof, which is our case, and uniformly distributed load. If excess is provided, 1.5 newton kilo newton per meter square, and if excess is not provided, then it is 0.75 kilo newton per meter square. So this is the case that we select, but this is up to 10 degrees only. That is slope up to 10 degrees, but for our case, it is. 17.21 degree so that means it is exceeding 10 degree so for slope exceeding 10 degrees we have to follow this concept that is sloping roof with slope greater than 10 degrees for roof membrane sheets or purlin 0.75 kN meter square less 0.02 kN per meter square for every degree increase in the slope that means up to 10 degree you can go with 0.75 kN per meter square as the Live load, but if there is increase than that of the 10 degrees, then for every degree increase, there should be decrease of 0.02 kN per meter square from the 0.75 kN per meter square. For example, if it was 11 degree, 
then the load will be equal to 0.75 minus 0.02 because for that one degree rise we will subtract 0.02 for now we have 17.21 degree that means there is exceeding value of 7.21 degree so for slope up to 10 degree centigrade it will be 0.75 but for slope 17.205 the live load will be 0.61 kN per meter square so this is calculated as 17 uh, 0.75 minus 0.02 into b9 that is 17.21 minus 10 degree that is 0.02 into 7.21 and this gives us 0.61 kN per meter square but we are applying on Perlin that means as a uh, uniformly distributed load as a frame load so we have to multiply the area load by the spacing of purling in order to distribute that load along the length so again select all so we will select the previous selection you can go with select get previous selection so we will apply half of the live load on the projection because of the weight that will be carried by the purling at the projections so the load is 0 0.61 uh, 0 0.57 considering the imposed load per meter 0 0.57 divided by 2 so this is the load that will be acting on the periphery so select live load global gravity force apply now select the remaining one and multiply this by 2 we will get the exact load that is to be applied on the internal purlins apply so 0 0.57 and 0 0.29 on the projection so this is the live load now we have to apply the wind load so the concept of wind load application is little bit different so we have to understand so wind load the basic concept or the basic formula to compute the wind load is force is equal to CPE minus CPI into A into PD so CPE and CPI are the force coefficient for exterior and interior of the building and this is for as per the IS code 875 A is the effective area of the structure for now it is the effective area of the roof cover similarly PD this is the design wind pressure and this is computed as 0.6 times of VV square you can find this in IS code and Vz, this is the designed wind speed uh, meter per second at any height z above the ground and Vz is equal to k1 into k2 into k3 into Vb and Vb is simply a basic design basic wind speed for a particular area and k1 k2 k3 are the factors that depends upon different uh, consideration that we will discuss later on so now the introduction to the structure so as I have already said, the type of the slope and building axis is not provided. Hence, we provided 0.75 km per meter square at the live load and there was reduction due to the increase in the slope of the roof. Now, considering the value of K1, K2, K3, we will follow the IS code. So K1 is the risk coefficient and it depends upon the importance of the building. And the value is computed from the table 1 risk coefficient for different classes of structure and we'll consider the class of structure as all general buildings and structure for which the mean probable design life of the structure is 50 years hence the k1 factor will be taken according to the basic wind speed and let us consider the basic wind speed as 47 meter per second as for many reasons in nepal the wind speed is 47 meter per second so the value of k1 will be taken as 1 considering the wind speed as 47 and mean probable life of the structure as 50 years so with reduction in the uh, mean probable life the coefficient is also decreased but but for now let us take this as 1 so basic k1 factor as 1 similarly k2 is simply terrain height or structure factor that depends upon the type of terrain and the class of the building so this you can find in 5.3.2 of IS875 that is terrain height and structure size factor 
and this depends upon the terrain and the class of the building and for the category of terrain you can consider category 1 category 2 category 3 category 4 so let me show you the table first so this is the k2 factor that depends upon the terrain category and the class of the building if there is no any obstruction in the terrain that is if the uh, obstruction height is less than 1.5 meter then you can consider that as a category 1 and category 1 uh, is selected for the open sea coast area that is flat treeless plains if there is no any obstruction then you will select category 1 similarly open terrain with well scattered obstruction having heights generally 1.5 to 10 meter you can select category 2 and on this category uh, we have open parklands, undeveloped sparsely built up outskirts of town and suburbs. So this falls under category 2. Similarly, category 3, ha cap cap category three have uh, terrain with numerously closely spaced obstruction having the size of building structures up to 10 meter in height with or without few isolated tall structures. So we can consider the city areas as the category 3 with well wooded areas, shrubs, towns and industrial areas full or partially developed. And similarly, category 4, terrain with numerous high closely spaced obstructions. These are the highly developed areas with numerous large highly closed obstructions. So this category includes large city centers generally with obstruction above 25 meters. So 25 meters is a high rise building we can consider. So that is for category 4. Similarly, class of building is also considered for selecting the K2 factor. And K2 factor is simply uh, the class is simply the structures having horizontal or vertical dimension less than 20 meter any of the dimension of the building either that is the width or the height less than 20 meter it is class a high structures having greatest dimension vertical or horizontal between 20 to 50 meter class b and structures having greatest dimension greater than 50 meter it is class c so for now we will select the terrain category as 3 and the class of building is a considering the height of the structure or the greatest dimension is less than 20 meter so terrain category a class a and height less than 10 meter so it is 0.91 so the value of k2 is 0.91 so terrain category 3 that means terrain with numerous closely spaced high large and high obstruction and building structure a that means dimension less than 20 meter so 0.91 Similarly, K3, this is the topography factor and it is taken as 1 for the slope of the terrain is less than 3 degree. The basic wind speed VV given in figure 1 takes account of the general low level site above sea level. This does not allow for the local topography features such as hills, valleys, cliff, which can significantly affect the wind speed in their vicinity. So, what is topography factor? We have a simple diagram to understand this. So, the K3 factor comes in action when the slope greater than 3 degree lies within the range of 5 km periphery of the structure. But for now, let us take as 1 considering that the slope is less than 1 3 degree. So, K3 as 1. Then the Vz comes as 42.77 meter per second. So, this is the design wind speed and design wind pressure which is simply 0.6 times of vz square that is 0.6 times of design wind speed square so this comes as 1098 newton per meter square design wind pressure so let us go to back to the formula of design wind pressure which was f is equal to cp into cpi into a into pd so we have computed the pressure that is design pressure now we have to understand the value of CP and CPI, exterior force coefficient and internal force coefficient. This depends upon the uh, S by W ratio and percentage of opening in the building. That is, CPE depends upon S by W ratio and the slope of building, while CPI, that is the coefficient, internal coefficient, pressure coefficient, depends upon the percentage of opening in the building. So, firstly, we will compute the CPE, that is, exterior coefficient. And for which we have to understand S by W. So from IS code, when calculating the wind load on individual structural elements such as roofs and wall and individual cladding units, it is essential to take account of the pressure difference between the opposite face of the elements. 
Now external pressure coefficient for pitched roof is computed from the table 5. Here you can see this is for the walls and table 5 is for pitched roof. And as I said the value of external pressure coefficient depends upon S by W that is building height ratio and the roof angle. For now the value of S by W is 0 0.48 and the slope is 17.21 degree. That's why S by W less or equal to 1 by 2. So we are with this case and if the value exceeds 0 0.5 and lies within 1.5 we'll select this case. But for now it is less or equal to 0 0.5. So this is our case and the degree of the roof inclination is 17.21. That means it lies between 10 and 20. EF, GS, EG, FH. So what are these terms then? So if we consider this as a plan of the roof, the wind coming from this side, then this will be the windward and the other side will be leeward. And there will be two cases, either the wind will come in this direction or will come in this direction. And the effect of these two can be considered for the wind coming from this side and this side. And the wind direction is computed with respect to the ridge and this is the ridge. So basically uh, ridge is the line joining the vertices of the truss. So these are the truss vertices and the line joining this is the ridge. And considering this side as E, F, G, H. So this is just naming of the structure. Then from the code you can see that wind angle theta 0 degree. So 0 degree means like this the wind is making 0 degree and that ensures wind normal to ridge. So this is the wind direction it will be normal to ridge. So theta is equal to 0 means wind normal to ridge. And the reason why we are considering only 0 degree and 90 degree is that the effect of wind will be maximum when it is acting perpendicular or parallel to the ridge. If it is making certain angle to the uh, roof, then the effect will be resolved in two direction and effect will be significantly reduced. So we are just considering theta is equal to 0 degree and 90 degree. For wind normal to ridge that is theta is equal to 0 degree, the wind will act on the face EF and GH. So windward EF that is the point where wind is coming and GH is the leeward. For 17.21 degree, the value lies between 10 and 20 and the value of EF is minus 1.2 and 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, minus 0 0.4. Why there is negative sign? So the basic idea is that for roof, the wind pressure or the windward pressure and leeward pressure are generally negative, which indicates pressure flows from inward to outward direction. It gives a suction type of pressure in the roof. In some cases when the slope is large and there are openings there might be some positive pressure as well but generally there is negative pressure which gives a suction type effect. Now we will interpolate the value that is for this much that is 10 to 20 and the angle is 17.21 and the value will be interpolated between minus 1.2 and minus 0.4 for EF. And for GH phase, it will be interpolated between minus 0 0.4 and minus 0 0.4. That means 0 0.4. And the value comes as minus 0 0.624 and minus 0 0.4. But for internal coefficient, it depends upon the percentage of opening. So this is from IS code. So 6.2.3. Internal air pressure in a building depends upon the degree of permeability of cladding into the flow of air. That is, so permeability means opening. And due to opening, there is chance of flow of air from inside to outside. And this decides the internal pressure coefficient. In case of building where the cladding permits the flow of air with openings not more than 5% of the wall area, where there are no large openings, it is necessary to consider the possibility of the internal pressure being positive or negative. Two design conditions shall be examined, one with the internal pressure coefficient as plus 2, plus 0 0.2 and minus 0 0.2. So the value of CPI considering 5% opening is plus minus 0 0.2. So what if the value of opening is less greater than 5% then? Building with medium opening that is 5 to 20% is 
which shall be examined for 0.5 and minus 0.5 and if the value exceeds 20 percent it is examined for plus 0 0.75 0.7 and minus 0.7 that is with the increase in opening the coefficient of internal pressure increases that is the effect is enhanced so we have to consider the openings as well for now we are assuming less than 5 percent opening hence cpi is 0.2 now we can compute the force windward pressure and leeward pressure the formula is simply f is equal to cpe minus cpi into a into pd then cpe which is minus 0.624 plus 0.2 considering the positive value of cpi into 1098 basically we have just a round up value so this comes as minus 464.91 newton per meter square negative value indicates a suction pressure that is upward pressure considering the negative coefficient of internal pressure minus 903.94 newton per meter square this is also a upward pressure for now leeward that this is this phase 0.4 and 0.2 this comes as minus 219.51 newton per meter square and considering the negative coefficient of internal pressure we get minus 658.54 newton per meter square this is also a negative pressure now when the wind parallel to reach that is the wind parallel to ridge means like this we can say parallel to ridge and for this case theta will be equal to 90 degree cpe now let us go to is code again and for wind angle as 90 degree ez and fh for 10 and 20 and s by w as less or equal to 0 0.5 the value is to be interpolated between 0. Point minus 0 0.8 and minus 0 0.7 for ez and for fh we have minus 0 0.6 and minus 0 0.6 so there is no need of interpolation so this is basically ez and this is fh for 17.21 degree 0. minus 0 0.73 so this is basics interpolation similarly leeward will be 0 0.6 cpi as usual for less than 5% opening it is 0 0.2 that is plus minus 0 0.2 windward pressure so for this phase and this phase this is minus 579.46 newton per meter square this is also a negative upward pressure similarly for negative coefficient of internal pressure minus 1018.48 newton per meter square similarly leeward pressure you will get minus 439.02 newton per meter square and minus 878.05 newton per meter square now uplift pressure so we'll take the maximum of this value as the internal uh, sorry as the wind pressure and we'll apply that on the uh, our model so for now it is 1018.48 newton per meter square so this is the maximum value from here and this is in newton per meter square we have to convert this into kilonewton per meter square so dividing this by 1000 we get 1.02 kilonewton round of value so we get this as 1. Point, minus 1.02 kilonewton per meter square and as we are interested to apply this load on purlin so we'll compute this load in terms of per meter so multiplying this by spacing of purlin we get 0 0.96 kilonewton per meter so this is the uplift pressure so in case if there is downward pressure that is positive value we have to consider that as well but for now there is no any downward pressure so we compute for uplift pressure that is the upward pressure only which is minus 0 0.96 kilonewton per meter so 0 0.96 is the wind load now let us select the previous selection which was the internal purlins we have to assign the wind load so you have to understand one point let me apply that and i will say global gravity force and this is 0 0.96 apply minus 0 0.96 as it is a upward force so this is the force that is the applied or that is the wind force but if we consider the effect of the wind load i don't think it should be vertical to purlin that is the roofing is done in certain angle we have to apply the load according to the axis or the local axis of the roof so on select the load and i'll see the local axis for the frames so here you can see the local axis is similar to that of the global axis but it is not the case the 
local axis of the purlin should be in certain angle that is in angle to the slope of the roof so we will change that the purlin from the right side of the ridge line is to be rotated that is the local axis has to be rotated specify standard local axis 17.21 so this is the local axis of the purlin according to the slope of the roof similarly for the purlins except or to the left of the ridge line is to be rotated through negative angle so minus 17.21 degree is it okay Cool. Now select the previous one and apply the wind load considering the local axis load direction is so basically RGB that is red green blue R means local axis 1 G that is green local axis 2 and B that is blue means 3 so we are going to apply load in the direction 2 and as it is in the upward direction so it is not to be provided in the negative value so apply 0 0.96 so, okay, select this outer one it is to be applied as the half of the value purlin at the ridge line is to be provided with the value that is 0 0.96 in the direction as it is provided so there is no change let us check for the other load as well display so load object frame cgi set so it was vertically down in the direction of gravity similarly live it is also okay now let us run let us save this So this is the deformed shape. Now let us go for the steel design check. So steel design section IS 800 2007. So make sure this is Indian IS 800. You can also go and check from viewer revised preferences and design code should be 800 2007. Now you can see that we are done with the analysis and you can see different types of color and different section has been assigned. So you can see for Berlin IS and B 40, 50, 50. 50 50 it is provided on the basis of demand capacity ratio so the red color indicates that the ratio of demand and capacity is almost equal to 1 that is not preferable we try to keep the, that value less than that of the 1 uh, somewhere between 0 0.7 0 0.6 so that will be a preferable value okay let us go display design info okay 0.964 not equal to 1 but less than 1 but significantly it should be equal to 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 and the lower one value is from the blue color that is 0 0.103 0 0.04 so it is okay now let us see and we'll finally assign the uh, section property as per the uh, requirement let us start with the bottom chord that is the bottom raptor okay let us assume we'll select a bottom chord for 100 similarly for the primary raptor is 80 for purlin we'll provide 65 y z go to x z and let us select the bottom chord first So the bottom card has been selected now let us assign frame member and for this we will be assigning isnv 100 apply okay similarly for the primary rafters Assign, go to frame, 
frame section and for the primary raptors we will be assigning ISNB80 apply okay similarly for pearlins uh, 65 okay now we have to assign for the cores so we have selected all the cores so frame section and let us assign is okay, 50 apply so after assigning let us go for the analysis again and go for the still frame design and you can see there is no any red color and we are still in the safer side that is the demand ratio is still less than one so it is okay so talking about uh, the type of support in this structure we have assigned in or pin support so in simple word we can say that if we design for fixed support and in case if in site if the fixity is not achieved then support which is responsible for restraining the rotation will not be achieved and hence the section will fail because we haven't designed the section for the moment so this is how a uh, truss looks in the real field as i've already shown you previously so this is the point where the purlin supports or purlin rest and one thing you have to notice is the purlin is not provided through the ridge line in real practice it is provided in this fashion that is uh, two purlins on either side of the ridge line this is due to the fact it will be difficult to cover this region with the CGI sheet if there is a single purlin. So we have to provide two purlins on this uh, fashion. It won't change the results significantly if we provide two purlins in this fashion in case instead of the single purlin through the ridge line. So this is how the uh, real practice looks like you can also model considering this to offset is provided at least 10 centimeter from the ridge line so this is how the purlin is provided so if we provide a single purlin then it will be difficult to support the cgi seat over this point so we we'll provide two purlins at this region and similarly as we have provided a projection so to hold the cgi seat we have to provide a purlin at the projection as well so this is the reason why we have provided purlin at this region I hope this video helped you and if it did and if it did help do like and subscribe thank you